Hello and welcome to today's lesson on scatter plots and correlation. So now when we're looking at a scatter plot, we're looking at a two variable situation. The first thing we want to do is build the graph for that situation. So when we look at our two variables here, okay, we've got age and the distance thrown in meters. So what we always have to think about first when we're making the graph and setting things up is we want to make sure that our independent variable is on the x-axis and our dependent variable is on the y-axis. So if you remember back to first semester, you know, we talked about independent and dependent variables when we were working with our function notation unit. So when we look at this situation, the distance thrown is dependent upon the age in years. Okay, we wouldn't turn that around and say the age in years is dependent upon the distance thrown. Okay, so we always want to label our axes. Okay, so we've got our age in years. Okay, we've got our distance in meters. And then we want to set our scale. So when we're looking at our age, we can go by one year at a tick mark. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, so we've got our scale now. We're counting by fives. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now we've got our age. Now when we're talking about our distance, our distance has to go from zero all the way up to 47. So we probably want to go by fives here. So we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. I should have probably even kept it a little closer together, but we can make this scale work for our values. Okay, so we've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So we're going to have a point that's going to be a little bit up there, okay, but we can definitely work on it. So we've got our X and Y values, so we want to draw our graph. Our person that is 12 years old, okay, through 20 meters, okay, so we're just going to go through do a rough estimation graph here, especially without grid lines. You're just trying to get it in as best as you can. Okay, 35 meters for our person that's 16 years old. Okay, we've got another 16-year-old that only threw 23 meters. Okay, so once again, we can see this is not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test just based on those two X values having different Y values for that same X value. Okay, 38 meters for our 18-year-old individual. Okay, we've got our 13-year-old individual throwing 27 meters. Okay, we've got our 19-year-old with 47. Okay, so that's the one that's going to be a little bit up off of our grid. And then we've got our 11-year-old that's throwing 18 meters. Okay, so we've got that value in here. Okay, but what you can see when we look at this data, there's definitely a very clear pattern. And what we're talking about today with the term correlation is what is the association of these points? Now, we can see as a person's age increases, the distance that they throw is going to increase. And this is going to work for a certain pattern over time. Okay, so when we look about look at correlation, correlation talks about two things for us, direction and strength. So we can have what we call a positive correlation, which are data values that follow a positive slope. Okay, we can have a negative correlation. Okay, the data values are following a negative slope. Now, when we talk about strength, the strength of the correlation is how well do they fit a straight line. Okay, so we can see these points right here would be very close to a straight line. So we would call this a strong association. 
Okay, the next type of association we could have is a moderate association. Okay, now, moderate association, they're going to be spread out a little bit more overall. Okay, and then our very last situation is what we call a weak association. We can still see an uphill pattern, okay, but that uphill pattern is fairly faint. We've got a large spread overall. And then worst case scenario, we have kind of that zero or no correlation situation. And I have to be really careful here when putting these points in, you know, to making sure that I'm pretty being very consistent so that there is no true pattern to those values overall. Okay, so if you can't see it, it is a no correlation situation. Okay, now, when we're doing correlation, okay, the good news is we're not going to have to use this nasty formula, but we want to show you what would go into the formula. Every x value minus the average, y value minus the average, multiply each pair for a coordinate point. We would add all of those pieces up. Okay, we have to do some of that summing as well on the bottom with a square root. Okay, so the good news is we won't have to use that formula. Okay, the calculator will do our correlation work for us. Okay, now, there's a lot of different models on how you can classify the strength of correlation. We're using basically the one-third, one-third, one-third model. Okay, where from 0.67 correlation to 1.0, we're going to consider strong. Okay, a moderate from 0.33 to 0.67, and a weak from 0.00 to 0.33. Okay, this is fairly consistent with the IB model. If you're going to have more of an AP model, what they would do is probably break it into quarters, and you would have strong, moderate, strong, moderate, weak, and then weak you know, for four areas, but it would just be broken up into four even pieces. But one thing that we want to look at, again, is every correlation, the sign is going to tell us the direction, positive versus negative, and then the size of the value on a scale from zero to one is going to tell us the strength of that value. Okay, so when we're looking at these, okay, we can see based on the value, we are going to have a strong negative association for this first one. Okay, based on the value in the second one, we've got a moderate, and it's still a downhill general trend, so a moderate negative. Okay, this would be our no correlation for the third. Okay, moving down in the bottom, we've got our positive associations here. Okay, so in this one, based on the value of 0.5, that's in our middle range, so we've got a moderate positive association. You need the two terms whenever there is a direction involved. Is it downhill or is it uphill? Okay, we can see that this one is uphill. Based on the R value, we've got a strong positive association. And in this situation, these points are perfectly on the line. Okay, we, you know, we can still consider it strong, or in this case, you could say there is a perfect positive relationship. Okay, so remember, when we look at correlation, correlation is just a value that tells us about the relationship of the data points between X and Y. Is it a strong positive or a strong negative? Okay, and think about some situations. If you're a golfer and we're looking at your practice time for golfing versus your score, hopefully that is a strong negative association. The more you practice, your lower your score goes. Okay, if you're looking at your math grade, okay, we're hoping for a strong positive here in a math grade. The more study time that you spend, your grade is going to increase because of that. Okay, now, how can we get this correlation value? We saw the formula. It was nasty. Okay, so what we're going to look at here is how the calculator can do it for us. Okay, now, the first thing that we're going to show, and I'm going to go through and show this, is we have to do and turn on what's called our diagnostic function 
for the calculator. So in your calculator, I'm going to quit out of that table, clear this out. You want to go second zero to get to the catalog. And then we're going to use the x negative 1 to get down to our d's. Once we do that, we arrow down to what's called the diagnostic. I went a little too far. Okay, we want to make sure that the diagnostic is turned on. And you just hit enter and enter again, and then it's done. Okay, if you didn't quite get that the first time, just rewind the video a little bit, and we can go through those steps again. But now, we've got the diagnostic on, and the next thing that we want to do is enter in our data. Okay, our data gets entered in the stat button. Okay, we want to edit. And what I've done is I've already typed in list 1 and list 2 to save us some time. You want to type in your values down at the bottom if you have some extra overlapping values. You just want to delete those out down at the bottom. Okay, now, once everything is entered, we go back to stat and then to calculate. And what we want to do is a linear regression. Correlation is a value based on the linear nature of the data. So we're going to use number four here for right now. There's two options, okay, but we're going to use this one. And we just want to go down and calculate. Leave your list alone, put everything into list one for X, list two for Y, okay? And then we can just go through and do our calculation. And then we can see the R value at the bottom for your correlation. So we can see, okay, this is data based on the weight of a soapbox derby car. Okay, so students build cars, race them down a hill. And this is a relationship between the weight of that car and the maximum speed as it goes down the hill. So with this negative association, we can see that there is a strong negative association between the weight of the soapbox derby car and the speed as it goes down the hill. So as the weight increases, the speed of that car is decreasing overall. And that is our lesson on finding the correlation value R using the graphing calculator and describing correlation and the value of R. Thank you and have a good day.